Hey guys, so at the request of one of my lovely students, um, I'm going to do a little bit more in-depth of a video on how I teach the heel. Now, as I've mentioned in some of my previous videos and in some of my writings, I always teach dogs how to heal off-leash first. Um, obviously, this needs to be done in a controlled environment where you can control the surroundings and make sure they're not going to be able to get away from you. But um, when we teach them to heal off leash first, it means that they are 100% paying attention to us, our directions, our bodies, everything like that. Um, and we're able to reward them. Now, obviously, if you have a dog that is just completely off the walls and like you can't get them to focus at all, um, maybe they're not easily like food motivated or something like that, this exercise is going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, and you might want to start with a leash because, you know, what we're going to use to keep their attention if we need it. Um, if that doesn't work for them, you probably will want to have them on a leash because we don't want them running off or getting hurt or anything like that. Um, and also it probably won't be a very successful training session. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the steps that I take when I'm first teaching a dog how to heal. Um, and please know it is a little bit different than probably some of the stuff that you've seen before. However, um, it has been extremely successful for me um, in many different situations and with many different dogs so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and teach you that way today uh, so the first step for me always um, I know that they teach you right off the bat that you want to have the dog sitting at your side you release from there you end there and I 100% agree with that however when I'm very first getting a dog to heal what I'm trying to get them to do is just excited to be walking with me and excited to be working with me so I'm not even gonna worry about like the auto sits right off the bat because I just want my dog to be excited about being in that position so um, I'm gonna show you kind of like what that first step looks like and then how we'll add in the sit after that so the very first thing that I'm going to do, so I'm just going to get him excited about being with me. I'm going to change direct directions on him abruptly pretty fast. Um, also, just so you know, I don't say heal, I say with me. Um, but he knows that that means to come to that position and be at my side. So I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to encourage him and say, Hershey, hey, hey, with me. Um, I don't know if you can hear him panting down here, but he's already excited. Um, and then as soon as he gets into that zone, in the heel zone, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reward him. So stay. Hershey, hey, hey. Boy. Hershey, hey. Yes. Good boy. Hershey, hey. With me. Good. Okay. So, as you can see, Hershey's getting excited. His tail's wagging. He's out there prancing. He's having a good time, right? Just like with recall, that's what we want when we're first teaching healing because inherently healing is not going to be very rewarding to your dog because they're not going to be getting to explore as much of their surroundings as they normally would. So we want to make it very, very rewarding right off the bat. So from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk away. I'm going to, this time I'm going to have him a little bit more controlled, but because he already knows what that position is that I'm looking for, I'm going to have him sit and I'm going to say with me, take a few steps, have him sit again. Okay. And as you can see, when we when we get our dogs focusing on us, I really didn't even have to cue him for most of that. Um, he's looking at me and he's watching to see what my body does, um, which is where we want our dogs to be at the end, right? So um, as you're working on it, you're going to have to reward them intermittently for every few steps. The more wild the dog is, the more you're probably going to have to reward them. So if we're walking a longer strip like this, it'll look a little more like this. Quit looking for the tree on the ground, dude. Good boy. Okay, 
So, he got a little distracted there because I accidentally crumbled the tree and it broke into like four pieces all over the ground. But I digress. So, once we get our dog to the point where they are like healing with us pretty much all the time, then it comes down to starting to refine that position, okay? Um, one of the hardest battles that you're going to face with that heel is just getting them to focus on you all the time um, and wanting to maintain that position. So once you're there, then that's when we want to start honing it in. In order to do this, there's a couple little tricks um, that I have that I wish I would have known starting out, out learning how to heal because it has made my life so much easier. Um, but there's a couple different tricks that you can use to get your dog's body into a different position. So the first one would be if you have one of those dogs who is constantly pushing all the way out to the side, um, like where they're like at the end of their leash and you're like, dude, like, can you move over here? Um, that's what this exercise is going to be for. And all you need is like a fence or a long wall. And in this situation, I'm going to use my truck because it's easy and I can show you with it. But essentially what I'm going to do is I am going to heal my dog through like a tight space essentially so they don't have anywhere else to go except for stay right there by my side. Now obviously if you have like a fearful dog or he's a little bit more nervous you might have to like slowly close that gap that's fine but we just want to get them comfortable and used to the idea of walking very tight to our body. Um, so if I was going to use my truck it would look like this. With me. And as you can see in this situation, he really doesn't have anywhere to go except for to stay really tight close to me. And it gives me a good opportunity to reward him for being in that good position. So um, as you probably noticed, as we were doing the loop, I didn't treat him at all. But then as I was passing by and he was sticking super close to me, I gave him two or three. That's because I'm trying to reinforce that really close position even more so than just the normal healing. <laughs> So again, we're gonna good oh boy. Good oh boy, okay? Yes, good oh boy. So we're just gonna kind of squeeze them in there. That way they have nowhere to go and we can reward them for that perfect position. Um, the next one would be for if you have a dog who is constantly trying to go faster than you or if they're trying to cut in front of you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn into them. Um, so essentially you'll be like pivoting off of your left foot and taking a step around them like this. Now, if you have a dog that's really bad about it, um, this can get very dizzy very quickly. Um, but what I want you to watch and for her, she, and he's actually doing pretty well today, but what I want you to watch for him is how, as I turn into his body, he starts learning to check his steps to realign with me. Um, that's what we're looking for. So like if you need to do that as you're doing it, if you have a really crazy dog, you might have to like use a treat to kind of like get their attention up on you as you're turning so they understand. Because if their head is locked up here and you're turning around them, they won't have any chance. They won't have anything else to do except for turn, right? Um, if I have a really rowdy dog, um, it's just like all over the place and they're like trying to jump on me and stuff like that um I will not use a treat I'll like kind of be more like the silent leader and just be like uh-uh and I'll just keep making circles and loops and stuff like that and forcing them to stay with me until they finally calm down it usually takes a couple circles but hopefully her she will go ahead and show me what I want to so like I said what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot into him so like essentially you're cutting off his path and we want to see their bodies adjust to get back into that proper position. So he did pretty well right there. You could see him kind of checking his steps and like turning his position to get back with me. So the last little trick is if you have a dog 
it is trailing really far behind you and you're just like come on dude like let's go and you don't want to be like pulling on their leash or whatever so yes you can either lure them back up into position or you can just teach them that they have to stay going at your speed and how you're going to do that is by turning the opposite direction and then encouraging them to come and catch up with you so that'll look something like this Good boy. And as he went around the corner, you could see he had to speed up. Biffy? Yes, good boy. So as we're teaching him that we're saying our cue for me, obviously, it's with me, I'm saying with me, and he's getting excited, he's speeding up, and as soon as he re-meets me at that spot, I'm gonna reward him. And that's what we wanna do for dogs who are just kinda lagging behind. We wanna get them excited about being up there next to us and working with us. Um, one thing I will say, um, and this is just kind of like a disclaimer. So if you have a dog that is not particularly treat motivated and is very stern and already has really bad leash manners, this probably is not going to be your go-to. Okay. Um, obviously I'm not telling you to like put them on a pinch collar and like yank and crank. Um, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, what I'm saying is those type of dogs, they usually need, for lack of a better word, broken, right? They need to learn that they are not in control of the leash and that when the leash is on them, that means that you are in control of the situation. A lot of dogs don't learn that early enough and they're just kind of allowed to be crazy on it, um, in which case it's going to be very, very hard to break it like that. Um, because they already have a bad behavior that they have built on that leash. So you'll kind of have to address the bad behavior first um, and then build the heel up like that. So if I have a dog that's really, really bad on leash, um, what I'm going to do, I'm still not going to like yank them. I'm still not going to do anything like that. Um, but what I am going to do, and I'll grab a leash really quick so I can show you. But anyways, what I am going to do is I'm going to keep my leash very taut and rather than just making it a very joyful, like kind of like willing exercise in the beginning, I'm going to let them know that like they don't really have a choice. So I'm still going to reward them. I'm still going to be communicating with them a lot. However, my, mo my movements and the way that I hold onto them and the leash is going to be a little bit different. So normally if I was going to be leash training a dog for the first time, I would have them on my waist just like this, relaxed, um, because I'm confident enough in myself as a handler that if they tried to pull, like this is a very normal thing for me. However, if I'm working with a dog that's completely crazy, I'm going to keep them on my side right here and I'm going to give them very, very little slack in the leash. The reason for this is the less slack that your dog has, the less space they have to get away from you, which makes that neurotic, crazy behavior much, much easier to manage. So I'm still not yanking him. I'm not like, I'm not like pulling him tight and like, come here, Hirsch, come in the camera. Okay. So I'm still not like, I'm not using the leash to like yank him. I'm not using it to like pull him. And I'm not even pulling up on it like this. Uh, Cause nine times out of 10, that's not going to be necessary. I'm keeping my arm relaxed and at my side and I'm keeping the leash pin down right there with it. Um, so then the training itself is also going to be a little bit more fast paced because I don't want to give that dog even a second to think about or focus on anything else but me. Um, again, this is for really high drive crazy dogs, right?
So as you could see, that was much more fast paced, but what I was doing was not even giving him a second to think about something else or focus on something else. As soon as he, we come out of one turn, I'm making him go into another one. I'm talking to him, I'm communicating with him. I'm forcing him to stay engaged on me and what I'm doing. Um, to be honest, once, once you take the time to like show a dog that they aren't in control on the leash, it does make healing a lot easier. But like I said, I choose to do it off leash, especially if the dog doesn't really have any like built up bad leash manners. And sometimes even if they do have built up bad leash manners, um, by doing it off leash, they're not immediately associating that exercise with going on a walk, which is where they built up all those bad behaviors in the first place. So, um, anyways, that's a little lesson on healing and, um, Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.